And I am joined now by Dr. Perry Bush from Bluffton University, and we're going to do a little discussion about a couple of topics. And I thought we would start things off today by talking about that recent U.S. drone that went down in the Black Sea from Russian interference. Kind of found it a little bit odd that Russia tried to make our story of that incident out to be a fabricated lie, but then our video definitely supported the claims of the incident. Yeah, uh, it is an interesting incident. Uh, Lennon is going to talk about it. You know, the, the, the fear when this Ukraine war broke, Ukraine immediately started calling for the United States and NATO to declare a no-fly zone over Ukraine, which would uh, prohibit, you know, Russian missiles and, and planes from being over Ukraine. And, and the fear, of course, was that if we had a no-fly zone, the NATO would have to patrol the no-fly zone. There would be an incident between a, a NATO warplane and a Russian warplane that could precipitate a wider war. And... Um, and that hasn't happened, and it's in part, that's a reason why the United States and others resisted making a no-fly zone, but here we suddenly had this drone brought down by a Russian warplane off the coast of Crimea last week, and um, and it raised a lot of, you know, tensions real quickly, and, and, and some nerves got frayed. But in the end, it, the situation resolved itself. It's clear that the Russian warplane brought down that drone, and uh, it's now resting at the bottom of the Black Sea, about 5,000 feet in the water. Uh, the United States suspects that Russian uh, ships are around there trying to recover it. It's a long way down. It'd be hard to recover. And apparently they, they cleaned off the drone before it, it, it splashed down. You know, electronically, you just clean up its screens. So it's hard to know what kind of um, uh, uh, intelligence coup it would be for the Russians. But it, it raised tensions briefly. Uh, of course, the Russians said you were in our waters because they are now claiming Crimea as part of Russia. The United States said that that's not in your waters at all. In fact, the word from uh, Lloyd Austin was uh, Russia accused Moscow of dangerous and reckless and unprofessional behavior. So it's just a little dust up. It, in the end, it doesn't seem to amount to much, but it does raise the specter once again of the, you know, of what could happen if we had, you know, a manned airplane go down and people, uh, soldiers killed on both sides between the United States or NATO and Russia, and it always, you know, the, the alarm bells go off for some of us, remembering the depths of the Cold War. Well, then, oddly enough, following that incident, China sends its president, Xi Jinping, to Russia to meet with Vladimir Putin in a sign of solidarity between those two countries. What did you make about the timing of this meeting between those two? Yeah, it was, Lynn, it was really interesting timing because, of course, this last weekend, the International Criminal Court indicted Vladimir Putin for war crimes. Right, so, and, and Putin there all of a sudden appears in Mariupol, this city the Russians have conquered and leveled down in the Sea of Azov, which in, in what had been part of Ukraine a year ago. And um, there's Putin smiling at the cameras, just kind of thumbing his nose at the West. And then Xi Jinping goes to Moscow, and the two clearly are having a, you know, what's the word today, a bromance going on. They call each other dear friend and dear buddy, and they signed a 14-point agreement. And of course, China is not yet um, supplying uh, Russia with but it is supplying them with all sorts of um, oh computer durable goods that uh, I mean uh, consumer durable goods that the Russians need computer chips smartphones raw materials they need for the war and in fact which Western nations have cut off from Russia so their relationship is deepening both have a kind of vested interest in allying together against the United States and um, but Xi Jinping you know is is imagining himself as some great you know third-party broker who can mediate a, a truce and a, a peace in Ukraine. And it's, it's most of the world does not see him as some neutral arbiter here. I mean, uh, he's met with Putin something like 40 times. They've had lots of conversations. I don't think he's met with Zelensky once. So it's hard to imagine him as some kind of neutral arbiter who could bring a peace. And in fact, the peace deal that he announced uh, clearly would, would cement in Russian territorial gains in Ukraine, right? And, uh, of course, the West says this would give Russia just a chance to um, be, you know, Anthony Blinken called it a diplomatic cover for Russia to continue to commit war crimes in Ukraine. So the, the peace deal was a non-starter, uh, but their relationship clearly is deepening, and there was some warmth there. And, you know, the whole sequence of events, like you just said, was kind of jarring. All right. Well, Dr. Perry Bush, thank you so much for your time this afternoon, and we will be back with more right after this.